Ever wondered what the dark web is? How do people access the dark web? Is the dark web illegal? What is the deep web and how is it different from the dark web? What is the role of cryptocurrencies in the dark web? Do you know there are three types of web and what you mostly use is only the tip of the iceberg? What if I told you that beneath Google, Facebook and YouTube lies a hidden world? A place where anonymity reigns, secrets are traded, and myths run wild. Have you heard whispers of a secret underground web where anything can be bought and sold? Is it all just a hacker's playground? Or is there more to the story? Stay with us as we unravel the mysteries of the dark web, a place shrouded in secrecy and often misunderstood. Welcome to Club Academia, where curiosity meets knowledge. If you're passionate about science, technology, and the wonders of our world, you're in the right place. Today, we're embarking on a mind-blowing journey to uncover the truth behind mysteries of the dark web. We will explain what is dark web and where the dark web came from. What percentage of the internet is on the dark web? Is it safe to use the dark web? What can you buy on the dark web? Why is the dark web so hard to regulate? Are there legal services on the dark web? What is the role of cryptocurrencies in the dark web? Is it just a mysterious underground of illegal activity? Or could it have started with something much bigger? Even more surprising? What if I told you that the US Navy was behind the creation of the dark web? Sounds strange, right? We're diving deep into how the dark web first came to life and how it went from a secure government tool to a global hub for anonymity, freedom, and, well, some less than savory activities. The internet is like an iceberg. What we see on the surface is only a small fraction of what's really there and what truly exists. Internet consists of three different parts. One, surface web. Two, deep web. Three, dark web. Let's explore each of them in greater detail. Let's start with surface web. As name suggests, the visible part of the iceberg represents the surface web. It includes everything easily accessible through search engines like Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Websites like Wikipedia, news articles, social media pages, YouTube, and online stores, all part of the surface web. The surface web makes up only about 5 to 10% of the entire internet. That means the majority of the web lies beneath the surface, unseen and unreachable through normal search engines. Below the surface web lies the deep web and even deeper, the dark web. Deep web is a vast portion of the internet that isn't indexed by search engines and can't be accessed through simple Google searches. This includes private databases, academic journals, medical records, online banking and internal company websites. In fact, the deep web makes up around 90 to 95% of the internet. So what exactly is in the deep web? Let's take a look at some common examples. One, university research databases. Think of online libraries with exclusive access to thousands of scientific papers. Two, government archives, such as legal records and tax databases that require authentication. Three, medical databases, patient records that hospitals and clinics use but must keep private. Four, subscription-based content, premium services like Netflix, where content is hidden behind a paywall. Five, corporate intranets, internal systems used by businesses for communication and file storage. All of these websites require login credentials, subscriptions, or special permissions to access. That's why they remain hidden from search engines. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just a different part of the internet designed for security and privacy. Now, there's a common misconception that the deep web and the dark web are the same thing. But that's not true. The dark web is a small hidden part of the deep web that requires special tools like Tor to access. While some parts of the dark web are used for privacy and free speech, others can host illegal activities. Unlike the deep web, which is mostly harmless and used for everyday activities, the dark web is unregulated and often associated with secrecy. What is the dark web? The dark web is an encrypted network that allows users to operate anonymously. Websites on the dark web use .onion domains instead of .com or .org and cannot be accessed with standard browsers like Chrome or Safari. Why was it created? Surprisingly, Tor the Onion router was initially developed by the US Navy for secure communication. Now, it's used for privacy-focused activities. And yes, some very shady dealings too. Let's explore the good, the bad, and the ugly part of dark web. What happens on the dark web? It's not all criminals in hoodies. 
Here's the breakdown. Let's start with the good parts of the dark web. Journalists and whistleblowers, many activists and reporters use the dark web to communicate in oppressive regimes. Platforms like SecureDrop help whistleblowers expose corruption. Privacy advocates, some people use it to protect their identity from surveillance and censorship. Let's explore the bad and the ugly parts of the dark web. Illegal marketplaces, drugs, weapons, counterfeit money, and even stolen data are often sold on marketplaces like the infamous Silk Road, which was shut down in 2013. Hacking and cybercrime. Forums exist where hackers sell stolen credit card information and malware. Disturbing content. While exaggerated in media, disturbing material does exist, though authorities actively work to shut down such sites. It's a double-edged sword, providing freedom for some and a lawless playground for others. The origins of the dark web. Let's rewind to the mid-1990s, back when the internet was still a baby in its early stages. The web was starting to shape how we communicated, but it wasn't nearly as vast as it is today. However, for the military and intelligence agencies, there was a major problem. They needed a way to communicate securely online, without risking exposure to enemies, hackers, or even prying governments. That's when the US Navy came into play. They needed to create a network where information could be shared safely, without leaving a digital footprint. In response, they funded a project called the Onion Routing Project, or simply TOR. Enter TOR. No, it's not the Norse god of thunder, it's short for the Onion Router. This was the US. Navy's answer to anonymous communication. Why Onion? Because the system encrypts your data multiple times, layering it, much like the layers of an onion. Tor allows users to browse the internet while keeping their identity hidden. Instead of directly connecting from one server to another, your data takes a detour, bouncing between multiple servers across the globe, making it nearly impossible for anyone to trace. But here's the twist. The Navy didn't create Tor just for fun or for conspiracy theories. They had a serious reason. They wanted to protect intelligence officers and informants. Think about it. If you were a spy operating in a dangerous foreign country, you'd want a way to communicate without risking your life. Tor gave them that. But here's where things get interesting. In the early 2000s, the Navy decided to make Tor open source. Why? To promote free speech and protect privacy around the world. They wanted journalists and oppressive regimes to be able to report without fear of being tracked. Activists fighting for human rights in repressive countries could organize in secrecy. Even regular citizens who valued their privacy could use it without government surveillance. The problem? When you give people the power of anonymity, it's not just used for good. As Tor grew, it became more and more popular for those looking to access the dark web. A place for everything from anonymous forums to black markets. This is how the dark web we know today began to take shape. What was once a tool for national security turned into something else entirely. While Tor was designed to protect privacy, it inadvertently opened up the door for all sorts of illicit activities. On the dark web, you'll find everything from illegal drugs to fake IDs and even dangerous hacking services. It's a place that's both fascinating and frankly frightening. But here's the catch. Not everything on the dark web is illegal. There are still plenty of people using Tor to stay safe and protect their privacy. It's a double-edged sword. So why should you care about the dark web's origin? Because it shows just how complex and contradictory the internet can be. The same technology that was designed to keep people safe is now used by criminals and hackers. It's a reminder that technology itself isn't inherently good or bad, it's all about how we choose to use it. And while the US Navy may have started this project to protect its agents, the impact on society, privacy, and security is far-reaching. Tor is still a tool used by millions today, not just for crime, but for legitimate privacy needs in an increasingly surveilled world. Why should you know about the dark web? So, why should you care about the dark web if you don't plan on using it? Here's why. Cybersecurity awareness. Your personal data could be at risk. Have you ever checked if your email has been leaked? Stay tuned, we'll show you how. Understanding internet privacy. With growing concerns about surveillance, learning about online anonymity is crucial. Avoiding scams, many people fall victim to scams that originate from the dark web. Knowing what's out there can help you stay safe. How to check if your data is on the dark web. If you're wondering whether your email or password has been leaked, check out websites like Have I Been Pwned? Just enter your email and see if your data has been compromised. If yes, change your passwords immediately. Here are the five real-life stories where the dark web was used for the good, the bad, and the ugly.
Our first story takes us to the heart of freedom of speech. For years, journalists and whistleblowers in oppressive regimes have faced extreme risks, from government surveillance to outright persecution. But the dark web has played a crucial role in protecting these voices. One of the most notable tools, SecureDrop. SecureDrop is an anonymous communication platform that allows whistleblowers and journalists to exchange sensitive information securely. One of the most famous examples of SecureDrop's impact was during the Edward Snowden leaks in 2013. Snowden used encrypted channels to leak classified information about the NSA surveillance programs, and he didn't do it through regular channels. He relied on the dark web for anonymity. Without the protections offered by the dark web, Snowden might not have been able to expose such a significant breach of privacy. So while the dark web has a reputation for being a haven for criminal activity, in this case, it helped reveal the truth and gave voice to those who would otherwise be silenced. Story 2. The Bad. The Silk Road. Now, let's talk about one of the most infamous stories from the dark web, The Silk Road. Founded by Ross Ulbricht in 2011, this underground marketplace became a haven for drug dealers, arms traffickers, and hackers. The Silk Road operated entirely on the dark web, allowing users to buy and sell illegal goods anonymously using Bitcoin. For years, the Silk Road was the go-to place for illicit activities. Drugs, weapons, even fake IDs could be bought with a few clicks. However, it wasn't just the users who were breaking the law. The site's creator, Ulbricht, was also accused of facilitating criminal enterprises. In 2015, Ulbricht was arrested, and the Silk Road was shut down. The Silk Road's fall sent a message to the dark web world that law enforcement would not tolerate this kind of illegal marketplace. Story 3. The Ugly, Human Trafficking and Online Exploitation. Now, for the ugly. The dark web's anonymity makes it a breeding ground for some of the darkest and most heinous activities, and unfortunately, human trafficking is one of them. Despite efforts by law enforcement to crack down, the dark web continues to be used for the illegal trade of people, whether for forced labor or exploitation. One of the most notorious cases was the takedown of Welcome to Video, the largest child pornography site on the dark web. In 2019, a massive international operation involving the FBI led to the site's closure and dozens of arrests. The site had hundreds of thousands of videos, and its users could pay for access with cryptocurrency. This was a dark chapter in the story of the dark web. And it serves as a reminder that while the web can be a space for anonymity and free speech, it can also harbor exploitation at its worst. Story 4. The Good Digital Fortress for Activists in Authoritarian Regimes Let's shift gears to something a little more uplifting. The dark web has been a lifeline for many activists in authoritarian countries. One of the most powerful examples is the use of the Tor network by protesters during the Arab Spring in 2010. Activists in places like Egypt and Tunisia used Tor to bypass government censorship and surveillance. The internet was a crucial tool for organizing protests, sharing information and exposing government brutality. Without the dark web and its ability to obscure identities and traffic, these activists might have been completely silenced by oppressive regimes. In this case, the dark web wasn't a tool for crime, but rather for resistance and freedom. It enabled people to take to the streets with the power of information, even when their governments tried to shut them down. Story 5. The Bad, the Bizarre and Disturbing Hacking Community Finally, let's talk about the hacking community on the dark web. While many hackers use the dark web to sell services or tools, some have crossed into much darker territory. One of the most unsettling examples is the rise of rats, remote access trojans. These malicious software programs allow hackers to remotely access and control a victim's computer, steal personal data, and even record their activities without their knowledge. In 2016, a group known as the Dark Overlord used rats to infiltrate hospitals, hold their data ransom, and steal sensitive patient information. Their actions caused chaos in healthcare facilities, disrupting services, and putting patients' safety at risk. The dark web is home to a dangerous community of cybercriminals who have no qualms about using technology to cause harm. While many are arrested, some continue to operate in the shadows, creating havoc wherever they can. So there you have it. Five real stories from the dark web that show just how complex and multifaceted this part of the internet can be. Now let's answer some of the intriguing questions about dark web. Question. Is the dark web illegal? Answer, simply accessing the dark web is not illegal. However, many activities on the dark web, like selling drugs, weapons, or engaging in illegal services, are against the law. 
Question. How do people access the dark web? Answer. Users access the dark web through the Tor browser, which anonymizes their internet traffic, hiding their identity and location. Question. What is Tor and how does it work? Answer. Tor stands for the Onion Router. It is a software that anonymizes users' internet traffic by routing it through a series of volunteer-operated servers, making it very difficult to trace users' locations and online activities. Question. What is an onion link? Answer. An onion link refers to a website that is part of the dark web. These links end in .onion instead of .com and are only accessible via the Tor network. Question. What is the hidden wiki? Answer. The Hidden Wiki is a popular directory on the dark web that lists various Onion sites, including those related to illegal activities. It's often a starting point for people exploring the dark web. Question. Why is the dark web so hard to regulate? Answer. The dark web operates in a decentralized manner, with anonymous users and encrypted communications. This makes it difficult for governments and authorities to regulate or monitor. Question. How much illegal activity happens on the dark web? Answer. A significant portion of dark web traffic is involved in illegal activities. According to some estimates, more than 60% of dark websites are involved in illegal operations such as drug dealing, hacking, and human trafficking. Question. Can you buy stolen data on the dark web? Answer. Yes. Stolen data such as credit card information, personal identification data, and login credentials are frequently bought and sold on the dark web. Question. What is the role of cryptocurrencies in the dark web? Answer. Cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin and Monero, are widely used on the dark web to maintain anonymity and avoid traceability, as they do not require traditional banking systems. While dark web is a space that has been used for some incredibly good causes, it's also a hotbed for crime and horror. The dark web can be a force for freedom, but it's also where the worst of human nature can lurk. As always, let us know what you think in the comments below. Have you heard of any other stories from the dark web that you think should be included in this list? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives like this. Until next time, stay safe online. The dark web is not inherently evil, but it's a place that demands caution and awareness. It's a fascinating yet dangerous frontier of the internet that teaches us the importance of cybersecurity, privacy, and digital responsibility. Now, we want to hear from you. What surprised you the most about the dark web? Have you ever heard myths about it? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this video insightful, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of tech, science, and beyond. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe.